TRAPPIST-1. It's a small red star orbited by seven rocky Earth-sized planets, and up to four of them could be habitable. The TRAPPIST-1 system is arguably the most notable planetary system aside from our own. It's also the setting for my current world building project. And since I've made some videos that are somewhat adjacent to this topic, I thought I'd start a series where I showcase what I've built so far. Yeah, that's it. Let's get started. We already have data for the first two planets of the system, so I'm just going to blow right through those. Planet B is a little larger than Earth, and it sits around 151 degrees Celsius. According to data from the web, it is a dark, barren rock with little to no atmosphere. That being said, we're going to be taking some creative liberties to spice this planet up a little more. Planet B is the closest to TRAPPIST-1 in a system of seven planets, all tightly packed in with each other. This configuration is very similar to Jupiter and its four moons, most notably Io. Io's volcanism is powered by the tidal forces between it, Jupiter, and its three other moon siblings. Based on how similar these two objects are, it's pretty safe to say that TRAPPIST-1b is gonna be a lot similar to Io. So, TRAPPIST-1b is now a super Io. Hundreds of volcanic plumes dot the surface of planet B, with multiple erupting at the same time. These volcanic eruptions can produce large plumes that could be seen from space. However, the volcanic gases produced by these plumes will not last that long. It still orbits a very active flare star after all, so all those volcanic gases are just going to be stripped away. TRAPPIST-1c is going to be... the boring one. Sorry. Based on the web data, it is very similar to TRAPPIST-1b. Barren rock, no atmosphere, yada yada yada. However, some follow-up studies suggest that TRAPPIST-1c has a very thin oxygen atmosphere, but that's still up for debate at this point. Despite how similar planet C is to planet B, I wanted to make it somewhat distinct from its inner neighbor, so yeah, TRAPPIST-1c is the boring one. Barren rock, thin atmosphere, some plateau scattered all over the place, but that's about it. Despite not having web data for any of these last three planets, I can pretty confidently say that planets F, G, and H are all ice worlds. Their densities suggest a large amount of liquid water, and their distances suggest that they're gonna be pretty cold. That's all the somewhat factual stuff I could say about these three planets, so let's get speculative. TRAPPIST-1f is the closest of the ice worlds. We're also gonna give it a very thin atmosphere with a significant amount of it being made of carbon dioxide. The relatively warm dayside temperatures combined with the amount of CO2 will give this planet a lot of dynamics. It's hot enough on the dayside for dry ice to sublimate, turn from solid straight to gas. As the CO2 ice sublimates, it's gonna leave behind the water ice on the surface. Meanwhile, the CO2 is gonna get blown to the night side of the planet where it's gonna snow back down as well. Snow creating a large ice cap on the night side of the planet. Some of this ice is going to creep up to the day side of the planet, where then it's going to warm up, sublimate, and complete the cycle. The wind patterns created by the moving carbon dioxide is going to create two-toned streaks across the planet's surface, almost reminiscent of planet-wide sand dunes, but made of ice. Planet G is the largest planet in the system, but like, not by much. Due to its larger size, I'm going to be assuming that it's also going to be experiencing a large amount of tidal forces, similar to Planet B. Because of this and its large amount of ice, I've decided to make Planet G a world of cryovolcanism. Similar to Saturn's moon Enceladus, large deep blue crevices spew out cryovolcanic steam, which lingers in the atmosphere and later falls down as fresh snow. Some of that steam, however, is going to do something very interesting while it's up there in the atmosphere. Ultraviolet light from TRAPPIST-1 is going to react with the water vapor and split it into two. The hydrogen is going to form hydrogen gas, which is just going to escape the planet, and the leftover oxygen is going to form oxygen gas, which is going to linger and actually create a pretty substantial atmosphere for planet G, with around 10% Earth's air pressure at sea level. And sure, let's just give it a subsurface ocean, just for the hell of it. Last and unfortunately least, Planet H is the runt of the litter. I didn't want to do too much with this planet either, so most of my efforts went into making this visually interesting. A lot of the outer ice worlds in our solar system are covered in a material called tholins. This material gives objects like Pluto, Erekoth, Europa, and a lot of other icy moons a deep brownish orange color. That's the most common color, but these tholins can vary a lot, as you can see. Hell, there's a pink dwarf planet out there somewhere that could be explained by the presence of Tholins. Taking inspiration from that, I've decided to give TRAPPIST-1h a coating of deep magenta Tholins. Ain't she pretty. Alright, I know you're wondering about these two, but you're gonna have to wait. 
The bulk of this new series is gonna cover these two planets in a lot more detail than I did for the rest of these planets. But until then, I hope you like the new series. I'll see you soon.